The dentists are warning that patients are being left in extreme pain and in urgent need of treatment as emergency facilities are overwhelmed by high dem demand during lockdown. Uh, it's led to a worrying rise in patients resorting to dangerous DIY procedures, just like our next guest, Faye Raywoods, who attempted to pull her own tooth oh. uh, using a pair of pliers after being denied an emergency appointment. Well, she's joining us now alongside Dr Monique Fasson. Good morning to both of you. Um, Faye, let's start with you first of all. So earlier this week, the British Association of Private Dentistry called for the Chief Dental Officer of England, Professor Sarah Hurley, to resign from her post. The association believes the UK has a dental crisis caused by unnecessary pain and suffering, even life-threatening situations. Well, talking of unnecessary pain and suffering, that's exactly what you had, wasn't it, Faye? So it was about the May the 5th that you started to get this toothache. How bad was it? It was the, the pain was horrendous. So I'd, I'd say it was worse than childbirth. It was it was a searing pain up the side of my face. It was I couldn't imagine a worse pain. What had happened? Um, I had a large filling that had come out of my tooth, and the, the the filling was the majority of the inside of the tooth, which just left a hollow shell. Um, the tooth went on to crack, and that's when the pain started to take hold. Oh, God, it sounds awful. And you were prescribed antibiotics, weren't you? But the pain just got worse. Yeah, the pain just got worse and worse. I did speak to my registered dentist, but they've got a protocol of what you need to do before you get a referral to an emergency dentist. Um, I also rang 111 and they referred me back to my registered dentist to be triaged. So there was, there was no way you could get in to see anyone? Not at that point. Um, he said he'd made referrals for other patients and they'd been rejected. It was only the most serious of cases that they would consider. So those with a temperature or those that were unable to breathe. So, so um, you, you're May the, this is May the 5th, as Holly said. May the 5th you wake up in this agony and anyone who has had toothache will know that that really is, you know, it's debilitating. It hurts so much. Um, May the 11th was when you took matters into your own hands. So from the 5th to the 11th, you are suffering this pain. Yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to sort of bear with it because obviously I knew the situation, what the situation would be with the dentist during um, lockdown. So I looked online for fillers and I went to the pharmacy to see if I could fill the filling myself. This was obviously before it cracked. Um, but the pharmacist said that, you know, we've had four or five people in every single day asking for these fillers and they had none in stock because everyone's doing their home dentistry. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? So uh, home dentistry is exactly what you did. You took things into your own hands. It's the word attempted to pull out your own tooth that I can't bear. Um, what did you do? Just describe what you did. OK, so, I mean, it was desperate measures. I was in a situation where I was just, you know, I was crying. I didn't know what to do. So I started off with a pair of tweezers, trying to move the tooth in the gum to loosen it. And then I got my husband's pliers and tried to um, to remove it myself. Oh, my God. Without... Faye, what are you doing? It so, was just, I just wanted that relief. I know, and it, that, because you were in so much pain, like, you were desperate, it's, that's what you did. In the Wild West, they'd give you a, you know, like a shot of bourbon or something. I mean, was, there was no numbing whatsoever. No, but that's why I had to do it in stages, so, so I'd do it for, say, five minutes, and then the pain would get too much, so then I'd have to pause and then restart again, but it was a fruitless mission anyway, because it, it just was budging, yeah. So what? So that was that. You had to decide then that that was it. You had to, you were going to give up. Yeah, and hence the video I posted that on Facebook, just just sort of identifying that the situation that I was in and that I shouldn't be in, and that I've gone to barbaric measures to try and relieve my pain. Um, and thereafter, I did ring more dentists. It's you know in desperation to see someone. And, and you eventually did. did. I did, yeah. And they took it out. They did. They extracted it. I was I was in and out within ten minutes. They were they were very professional. They had PPE on. They you know took my heart rate and my temperature just to ensure that I didn't have any signs of COVID. Um, yeah, it was really good and the relief was immediate. Obviously, when they put the injections in for the anaesthetic, the pain just went and I was a completely different person. I it almost, was it was almost feel big. the relief on yeah. your behalf there. Um, the, the the fact that it was gone. All right, thank you. Um, let's um, let's talk now, now to Molly because 
The th one of the things to take away from that, we'll get into uh, trying to get appointments and uh, whether or not dentists should be open in just a second, but that was a refilled, a perfectly good tooth that came out. So how many teeth are we losing now up and down the country um, because extraction is, uh, is, the, is the first option? Yeah, well, well firstly, um, I have to apologise on behalf of, uh, you know, well, dentists out there for the situation that people like Faye are having to go through. It's certainly not something that we want as a profession. You know, we signed up to help people. We signed up to provide certain levels of care. And it's absolutely disgraceful that people are having to take matters into uh, their own hands. Now, how many dental problems are going undiagnosed? Uh, Phil, who knows? Who knows right now? Um, what we do know is this isn't a good situation. And lots of patients uh, just cannot get access to care. The guys in the urgent care centres are absolutely working their hearts out to try and cater for people. But there's just not enough people doing it. So there's nowhere for these patients to go. And obviously the treatment is relatively limited because it's trying to prioritise the really serious cases, which is why we are really as a profession trying to get together to uh, enable us to at least provide in a safe environment um, emergency care to people who really need it. So it seems that the, the, the kind of extreme, the, the emergencies are being dealt with, but it's these, it's these fairly common dental problems and concerns that may get significantly worse because of the time it's taking for them to be dealt with. Absolutely. There, there are a variety of uh, dental conditions or health conditions, Holly, that go on uh, every day that are often just picked up by dentists carrying out their routine checks. And... This is why it's important to go to the dentist so regularly, sometimes when maybe you're not feeling pain, because we diagnose that's part of our job. And we're unable to do a big part of uh, that right now. And all we can do is assess remotely. Uh, and, and what dentists want really is just clear direction from the top about what we can do, when we can open, what levels of provision we can have so that we can stop patients uh, suffering because people are uh, having lots of undiagnosed problems right now, and when they manifest, it's often too late. So do you feel then, in that case, that uh, uh, all routine dental operations cancelled from the 25th of March, and there's been no real mention of dentists since then, so do you feel that you've, you've been sidelined or forgotten here? Oh, look, I mean, undoubtedly, um, the Chief Dental Officer has talked uh, extensively about NHS dentistry, but a massive proportion of the dentistry that goes on in this country is done on a private basis, a huge amount. And there's just literally no guidance for private dentistry. And consequently, all our professional bodies are, who are using the chief dental officer's advice to um, sort of cover all aspects of dentistry. So I think we just really need clear, clear guidance. The government seemed to have overlooked several aspects in terms of the financial support they're offering practices. Um, uh, but nevertheless, that's a sideline. The biggest thing here is that when we've got patients in pain ringing us every day, especially in private practice, there is nowhere to send these patients. Can I, and if there can are... I ask you then, when you see Faye, who's pulling out her own tooth, I mean, how, how dangerous is that, that people are resorting to at-home dentistry as severe as that? Yeah, terrible, absolutely terrible. Look, dentistry is a difficult uh, trade to get into in the first place. It takes years and years of studying, of mentoring, to go and learn how to do this. And even then, sometimes teeth can't be taken out and have to be referred in. So absolutely, I must stress, please do not try and take your own teeth out. Um, please try and ring whatever, whoever you can to get advice, because ultimately, uh, sometimes a relatively straightforward extraction can turn into an absolute mess and uh, can potentially put lives at risk. So it's really important that we uh, these things are done in the right environment. But you don't blame people when they're in terrible pain and they've got no yeah. other option. Uh, so we need to find that solution. And uh, all we can do is press and press the government and the bodies to just make sure they give us a clear pathway to return to work in a safe way. Um, the Chief Dental Officer for England, uh, Sarah Hurley, comes under the umbrella of NHS England, so that's where this right of reply has come from. And they said as soon as Public Health England and the Chief Medical Officer advise it is appropriate, routine dentistry will be able to restart. In the meantime, 500 urgent dental care hubs are available across the country for those who need their care. And, and as I think you've said, you know, they are getting certainly getting better. Um, but uh, but uh, f from a dentist's point of view, you'd like to go back to work now, would you? 
Well, there's certain aspects. Look, at the end of the day, we're still in phase two of lockdown. So I don't think anybody's saying, let's go back to absolute normality. But we should be at least able, if we've got the PPE and the exact setup that they've got in urgent care centres, what is the problem with us being able to care for our own patients? When we look now, there are so many strategies in place. A dental surgery is already probably one of the cleanest, most heavily regulated environments out there after an operating theatre in a hospital. So we've been dealing with infectious diseases for years. And in fairness, there are lots of easy things that we're already doing that can quite easily prevent uh, infections getting to, to patients and passing things on. And uh, people are working already in the background on strategies that we can employ once we get back in practice. And they're not difficult. They're not things that we're already doing. Some things we just have to maybe do them slightly differently. But we're able to do this. And I think at least all we're asking is give us some sort of direction. Give right. us some sort of pathway and guidance. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Faye, as well. Yeah, Thank thanks, Faye. Yeah.